Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I recently had an experience where I was uh, taping a, a TV shot, actually it was with the news, and uh, afterwards one of the assistants came, came up to me and said, um, you know, I've heard about gluten and, you know, I see the gluten-free foods in the grocery store and I guess it's the healthier way to eat, huh? <laughs> and it struck me that we need to talk about the basics, perhaps, a, a lot more so that individuals can really understand what the problem is with gluten. And, it, and it's not uh, on the same lines as uh, lower trans fats or less sugar or less artificial sweeteners or things like that in the diet where you do it because it's healthier. It's a better choice. Um, but you don't always have to do it and because you know, people might try to eat well most of the time, uh, but if you've been following me for a while or you yourself are gluten intolerant, you know that's not really an option <laughs> for those who are gluten intolerant. So, this is a let's get back to the basics video. So for those of you who know, know it all, just send this to a friend or family member who, who needs some basics. Uh, when we talk about gluten intolerance, that is an umbrella term. Beneath that umbrella is celiac disease and gluten sensitivity. Celiac disease is the disease we've known about associated with gluten for many hundreds of years and uh, it affects 1% up to 4% of the population as our population ages that uh, incidence increases. This is newer research. Gluten sensitivity is uh, the other condition under the umbrella of gluten intolerance. It affects minimally 10% of our population. Personally, I think it's quite a bit higher than that, maybe 30 plus percent. We'll see as research uh, continues. Research into gluten sensitivity is very new. We wrote our book, The Gluten Effect, two years ago. And it's really the concept of gluten sensitivity and the fact that it's a legitimate condition is really just coming into its own. Research is just happening in the last, within the year actually, uh, this year 2011. So uh, that's a very active area. When it comes to knowing or wondering if you're gluten intolerant, it's a big question because gluten affects over 300 uh, well, creates over 300 conditions and diseases uh, in, in the human body. It affects every system, every possible system, so not just digestive, but neurological, which is even more common than digestive, uh, hormonal, so getting into reproduction and uh, infertility. When I said neurological, things like migraines or ataxia, not having the correct balance or having trouble with balance, uh, neuropathies, meaning you're having uh, tingling or pain having to do with nerves, uh, hormonal also depression, anxiety, and uh, it goes on to joint pain, autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease is the third leading cause of death in our country, and there's over a hundred different autoimmune diseases, so it really branches out uh, when you're talking about gluten. Certainly if there's any celiac disease in your family or someone has autoimmune disease in your family, your risk level just uh, rose probably quintuple that of the average person. Uh, but what's interesting about gluten is, is it is a protein. It's found in the grains wheat, rye, and barley. Our oats in this country are contaminated, so a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, there's gluten-free oats, and that can be a little bit of a confusing terminology because oats in and of themselves are not a glutinous grain, but they're contaminated because they're grown in adjacent fields and they are shipped in the same trucks and they're manufactured in the same kind of plants. So um, it's cross-contamination is the problem with oats, so you really need to make sure your oats say gluten-free, which means there is no cross-contamination happening. Uh, there are other grains like farro and bulgur that aren't quite as well known, spelt, uh, that are in the family of wheat. And certainly can, you can go to our website at healthnowmedical.com and, and see all the things you need to avoid uh, if you want to be gluten-free. So, uh, But what's unusual about the protein structure of gluten is that it's very, very difficult to digest. So there are parts of the protein molecule that as human beings we literally cannot digest. So it gives one pause wondering, is, is gluten really a food for us? 
if we don't have the wherewithal to properly digest it. Um, I heard a, sort of a funny commentary that the animals that are designed to digest gluten have four stomachs and chew their cud, so thinking cow, um, which obviously we don't, we only have one stomach. So if you're human, you do not digest this protein well. Not saying that 100% of us have a gluten problem, but it does give one, one pause when considering whether gluten is, is, is truly a food or not. So the other thing I'm frequently asked is, is gluten the same as an allergy? So someone will say, well, I had an allergy test and I didn't come up positive for wheat. A wheat allergy is very different than a gluten intolerance. So uh, and, uh, whether it's celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, these are not true allergies. So you can have an allergy test and that's not at all the same as a celiac test or a gluten sensitivity test. Speaking of testing, testing is not perfect. Um, I certainly recommend it. We have a test that uh, is, very, is, is as sensitive as, as uh, tests are these days, which are much better than they were last year, uh, but not as perfect as we would like. But there is a test where you can get blood drawn and, and, and look at the whole uh, parameter from celiac all the way through gluten sensitivity to see if you fall within that range. Uh, but with that said, we always back it up with 30-day elimination of gluten to see how the patient feels. Uh, some of our most wonderful success stories were patients that uh, were equivocal, meaning maybe yes, maybe no, on their test, but once they eliminated gluten from their diet, we found them absolutely gluten intolerant. So um, a negative test does not necessarily mean that you don't have a problem. We always want to back it up with that 30-day trial. And before you do the 30-day trial, you really have to know all the sneaky little places where gluten might be so you're not striving hard to do a trial and then doing something like eating soy sauce that has wheat in it or eating um, meatballs because they're made with breadcrumbs but you've never purchased, personally made a meatball so <laughs> you didn't think that that was one of the ingredients. So uh, once again, our website can help with that. But um, I really wanted to give a little bit of a back-to-basics talk, and I hope this was helpful. Please contact me if you have any questions or need any help. That's what I'm here for. And until next time, I wish you very good health.